Hey there, Nikki Tracos of Life by Design. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this tutorial, I wanted to show you how you can practice a wet on wet technique, painting some clouds. Clouds are such a fun thing to paint and something I teach in my landscape class as part of working on our landscapes, but also building our skill with painting uh, using watercolor and wet and wet. So what I have in front of me, I have um, a bunch of my favorite rounds. These are Life I Design brushes that are collaboration um, with Kalia. And for watercolor, I decided to pick up my, it's um, Mayango, and I think it's 24 um, color set, which I really love. I typically use two paints of watercolor, but I thought I would pull out the dry palette so I can use that in today's tutorial. I have a couple of jars of warm-ish water. I like to use warm water to help wake up dry pigments. It's a really quick way, it's kind of my little cheat. And I have a nice stack of paper towels that I can use to um, go ahead and dab off my brush. Okay, so very simple. Oh, as for paper, um, this is Fabriano. I really like their palettes, Fabriano as well. I just took off the um, cover. It's Artisto, Artis Artistico, and it's 100% cotton. Really great size for working on some practice, especially if you're working on clouds. So I'm just going to go ahead and get warmed up a little bit. Um, but when you are painting clouds, what you want to do is create a nice wash of just a wet glaze, nice wash of um, water on the top of your paper so that it's a bit shiny. Hopefully you can see that shine, but I don't have a wall of water. Actually, before I get started, I'll just make sure I have a tissue handy, nice and clean very very important so what you want to do is if you're not familiar with the colors that you have on your palette what you want to do is wake them up and maybe give them a little swatch go ahead and swatch down here it's a nice blue working on and I do have a color story that I painted for this palette but I'm just going to I'm gonna wing it there we go so we've got some nice ranges of blue here and what you want to do is just, again, make sure when you're using 100% cotton paper, you want to make sure that your page is primed so that you can go ahead and start dropping in your pigment and just letting your brush dance. Again, when we think of clouds and the sky, everyone's sky and view from where they live is going to be different. We tend to have a lot of um, fluffy clouds, bluer skies, if we have a storm coming in, then of course our sky changes. But what you want to do is just, you can even go in and add a bit more water with a clean brush, just start to lay down your color and get warmed up. So right now I'm thinking about a sky, but really I just want to warm up that muscle memory, get a little bit loose, because with this style of painting, you really don't want to be rigid. You just want the water. I like that white spot there. You just want the watercolor to do its thing as it starts to create some interesting shapes. And I am moving it around quite a bit. I really like this blue actually. Okay, just warming up my hands. I'm not even really thinking about the sky, but if I wanted to start to bring in some highlights, I could get my tissue and pull away some. Again, I'm thinking fluffy clouds. And then with a wet brush, I can create some puffiness. Okay, so just again, as I'm working, I'm observing how the watercolor is bleeding in areas that are still slightly wet. I can rinse off my brush and just, and it helps too if you do have a visual reference. Sometimes when we have a visual reference, it can create a little bit of stress because we feel like we need to copy it and replicate it so that it looks like the visual. 
but I am a firm believer. I'm just gonna dry off my brush and pull away some of that sky there. I'm a firm believer in just allowing yourself some artistic liberties and how you are interpreting uh, what you're painting. So don't worry, it doesn't have to be hyper-realistic. Okay, there we go. And you can see it's starting to come together, even though this is just my warm-up. Go ahead and drop in a darker. Okay, and then what I like to do with these is I'll actually keep them for reference. I can see um, what colors I used, and then I tend to just make notes to myself. Always lay your brush down, remember that. I'll just grab a pencil. And this is my, uh, how do you spell? I just don't want to get it wrong. Mun Mungio, I'm probably mispronouncing it. I'm sorry if I am. Mungio, Mungio. Um, palette. And then that way I remember which palette I used. And then even as it's starting to dry, I'm almost compelled to go back and add just a little bit more of that deeper blue sort of at the bottom here, which is really pretty. So again, I wanted to show you just a quick way to paint clouds so that you can warm up. You can get a feel for um, wet, painting wet on wet. And again, just it's another practice where you can paint something that can be um, just an abstract version of clouds, allows you to pick up your paintbrush to practice. I feel like that is a struggle with some of my students is not having the time to practice or even knowing what can I paint if I have 10 minutes and um, I really just wanna connect, put my brush to paper and paint something, what can I work on? So I feel like painting clouds is a really great thing to do. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and prep our paper. So this is different paper, so it will look different from our um, original version. And look how it's drawing, it's kind of cool. So again, think abstract, loose when you're painting clouds. It can be an abstract version of the sky. And again, in the landscape class, we do this a lot, which is really fun. So I'll start with that first blue that we put down. And maybe what I'll do is I'll focus on maybe carving out some bigger fluffy clouds. So I haven't re-dipped my brush. I'm just letting whatever pigment on it sort of come to life. Um, not even thinking about the shapes. Maybe there's a little, just really letting the brush move. You can see I'm holding it, the brush that is really high up so that my hand can move and moving my whole arm, just letting it play. And at the beginning, I almost feel like sometimes with paintings like this, um, they look ugly before they start to turn into something more beautiful and interesting. And be okay with that. Be okay with getting to a point in your piece where you're thinking, oh my gosh, I am not digging what I am seeing. And be okay with that because as you go, you'll see even here as it's starting to dry, look how gorgeous that is. Just really impressionistic, loose, and no stress, my kind of painting, no stress. So I'm just going in with the three different blues. Again, this is sort of the darker of the three. You can even mix them. You can see I'm not even using a mixing palette. I'm going straight in and just starting to create some dimensions. Now I'm going to rinse off my brush and this is already blue, I don't mind. I'm going to start to Blend a little bit, dabbing, pulling up, create again some nice variation, and then I'll definitely go back in. So the bright whites, and hold up your piece. So I'll take a look at it. The bright whites are a tad bit bright. So go ahead and just fill them in a slight bit. So I'm calling this a cloud tutorial, but really it's an exercise that you can do to help warm up, enjoy some wet on wet, even blending, go ahead and blend those blues directly on the paper. So I'm using more of a purpley blue 
and a really cool blue. As it's starting to dry here, you can see how it's not as wet on wet, but I really like that effect. I think that is really cool. I quite like that. Okay, going back in through here. So it's impressionistic. Creating some shadowing here. Mm, I'm really liking the bottom there. Let's go ahead and with a dryish brush, move that around so we can see what shapes we can get. Again, just wet brush, not a lot of pigment. And maybe our sky is darker in this corner here since we have a bit of a white spot there. So again, think of your values. So we have some darker spots, but don't feel the pressure. Kind of like that as the darkest edge on our cloud formation there. And again, it, it's hard when you're looking, when you're not looking directly at the cloud, but you can always hold up your page ever so slightly. And you can use different um, type of brush. I love my round brushes. I tend to use them for just about everything. But again, you can use a filbert. I just wouldn't use a flat. I feel like you just need a rounded edge. I'm liking how what's happening there. Let's see if we can blend it together with the rest of our sky. Adding a bit more water to our palette here. There we go. And then this can even use a little bit of softening. Maybe that edge needs to be softened a bit more too. So you can see while your page is still wet, you have an opportunity to blend. I'm going to take that down. I wasn't going to, but I am going to take it down slightly. You may be thinking, but Nikki, you just totally got rid of everything you painted. That's okay, we're gonna layer over top. It's a process and it's um, one that should be loose and one that you experiment with. There we go. And I feel like too, as I'm talking you through this, I'm putting pressure on myself, right? So when I'm recording, oh, we've got some sirens happening. Whereas here, it was just very loose and I knew it was just going to be practice. It sort of comes together on its own, but I kind of like what's happening here now. Let's go ahead and bring that down in here. And then what if we were to drop a little bit of this darker blue? Because even with watercolor, once it dries, it, it changes. Colors start to deepen. The value range, I feel, is even stronger. That's quite dry, so I'll go ahead and just re-wet a slight bit. There we go. And I feel like I'm almost done. I don't want to overwork it, and I'm really curious to see what it'll look like dry. But it's, again, abstract and playful, just so you can get a feel for how wet um, your page is and what the pigment starts to look like when it's that wet. And then as your page is drying, you're seeing again how your paint behaves, how much water maybe you need to add to your brush, how to blend. So this is all really good practice something that you could do daily, in fact. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up. It's quite cool. And just ever so slightly, I'll again create some more spots where the clouds are hanging off the edge there. 
Okay, so really loose, impressionistic. I know once I finish the tutorial, I'll probably want to go back and work certain areas. I tend to like skies that are a little bit more. That's really neat. It reminds me of looking really high up. Another trick I'm going to show you is what your piece looks like when you frame it with just some white paper. So put it to the side because what it does is it helps you, might be a bit too short, it helps you visualize better and maybe wait until it's dry. Different parts of your piece. So I really like what's happening in the center there. I can go ahead and focus in on that area. So sometimes when you're able to really sort of control different parts of your piece, create some beautiful visual interest there. Okay, so again, calling it a cloud tutorial, it really is a lesson and practice on wet on wet and learning how to control. Look how beautiful that looks now that it dries. See, I actually prefer that because it was loose. I didn't have, I didn't feel like I needed it to look like something or represent something. I'm actually quite pleased with how it's dried even. Um, I have to remember what paper this is exactly, but I love that it's slightly textured too. And again, look how gorgeous that is. So as often as you can put brush down to paper, I would say do it, even if it's for a quick practice, um, like this cloud wet on wet tutorial. It helps you explore colors. It helps you practice that muscle memory, build your confidence and have some fun. So again, this is an example of what we do in landscape, uh, watercolor landscapes made simple. I hope you check out the class and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. See you next time.